Well, God bless you, Bishop Shaver here. Thursday afternoon, and I'm telling you what, God is so good. Brought us through the valleys. He's helped us up on the mountaintop. You know, we've seen that which has tried to destroy us, only make us stronger. You know, I'm just excited that God is just using us in these latter days. And, you know, there's so many things that are going on, and we look at this, and we ask this one question is, what is God really wanting to do with my life? What is God really wanting me to see? And I've been reading in the Word, and I was reading some of the words of Apostle Paul. And you know, Apostle Paul, he was just saying that, listen, he said, Christ is our firm foundation. And you know, upon that foundation, upon uh, who Jesus is, the Christ, the Son of God, the great I Am, uh, you know, our healer, our confidant, uh, you know, he's the uh, director of our life, uh, you know, and so when we build upon him, you know, as one as one brick is laid upon another, you know, so our lives are built one day upon another, one hour upon another, and years go by, and you know, when we build upon the truth, which Jesus is the truth, we build upon the truth, and what happens is we have a a firm uh, structured life on a firm foundation. But it's still hard. Life is hard. You know, many times we just want to say get over it. Many times it's just like, well, you know what? Uh, we got to. We just got to live so spiritual. And yes, we do. But I want to say this. You know, I've come to see in life that everyone. Everyone has demons that they're fighting. I call them Goliaths, you know. Uh, I may not fight, uh, you know, I may not fight Goliath, but I've got my own giants, as the song says. And I identify these as coming against, you know, that which God has for me or for you. And so we get to the point where we understand this, that mortal man is in so need of a Savior that when we pray and say, I can't do this, I just can't do it, or maybe there's an addiction you can't break and you've tried everything, you go, I can't do it. And I was there, you know, I was there with addiction, nicotine, addiction to alcohol, uh, you know, uh, and addiction to, you know, things of the world. And I could not shake them by myself. And I just, you know, had to come to the place where I said, these are my giants. And so I had to literally start saying, you know, as David faced Goliath, David went and brought in remembrance uh, to King Saul of how God had delivered him before. He said, a lion came, and I killed it. There was a bear that came. After the sheep, I killed it. And what David was saying is, I'm a protector of the sheep. I'm a shepherd. And, you know, uh, I believe that many leaders today they don't understand that, listen, that when the enemy comes in, the enemy comes in to scatter the sheep, comes in to uh, come against the uh, under-shepherd, to come against the doorkeepers. And we just saw this on uh, TV, you know, the last several months we've seen this with one of the preachers that, you know, uh, preached the word. I followed him for years and just loved his preaching and, and everything, And uh, but you know, uh, he had he had a giant. He had a giant, and he, he you know he couldn't take that giant down by himself. And he ended up falling into you know uh, situations that he shouldn't have. And so you know I looked at this. There was another uh, pastor on the news today, uh, big mega mega church and everything else, and come to find out that years ago that he had sexually assaulted a I think it was a 12 year old girl and everything uh, and so he he stepped down and you know he had a giant and I just look at humanity today I look at you know each and every one of us you me everyone we have giants and you know the only way that we can ever defeat that giant is like David you know that giant comes with worldly uh you know, worldly uh, prizes. Uh, the, it comes with attacks that want to, uh, you know, please the flesh. And and it, it comes even to where, you know, to take you out of church. Well, you know, I don't go to church anymore. You know, I don't, 
uh, pray much anymore. I don't read my Bible much anymore. And that's that giant, you know, that's making fun of your God. And that's that giant that's saying, hey, listen, you don't need that church scene. You don't, you don't need to hang around them Christians. But yet, you know, at work, you're hearing all these filthy jokes or, you know, uh, you get into conversations that you have no business in. And that giant is saying, come on. I got, I got more out here for you. Come on. But the Holy Spirit's saying, come on back. Let's get back into praise. Let's get back into worship. Let's get back into the things of God. You know, it's going to be a hard journey back. It's going to be, uh, you know, uh, coming against the flesh, defeating the, the fleshly mind. And, you know, I think in the day and time that we live in right now, you know, we're seeing that hell is trying its best to destroy everyone. And it's not just Christians. It's humanity themselves because every man, every woman, every child is made after the image of God. And Satan hates any any man, woman, child. I don't care if they're Islamic. I don't care if they're whatever religious, you know, Hinduism, whatever it is. He still hates them because they remind him of God and where he used to be and what he used to have. And so he wants to see everyone fall. He wants to see everyone, you know, uh, he wants to see them cast down. And he tried that with Jesus in the wilderness. And Jesus said, listen, you want to attack me in the flesh? And I am hungry. Yeah, I'm hungry. But understand this right here. I'm not going to let you win by me doing something that may seem spiritual. I'm not going to turn these rocks into bread. I'm not going to do all that. You know why? Because the only thing it does is you say, see, I got you to do this. It was me telling you to do it. And, and Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So I just want to I just want to ask you, uh, you know, are you ready? Are you ready to make a change? Are you ready right now to say, you know what? One thing I'm going to do is I'm coming after that giant. I'm not using somebody else's armor. I'm not going to use what somebody else has got. And just like David with King Saul, if your armor is so good and it's so strong, how come you didn't go against him? How come you want to put it on somebody else? No. I'm going, to go in the, I'm going to go in the courage and the respect and the fear of the Lord. And David ran toward him. He said, you come to me with a spear and a sword, things of the world. But understand this, I come to you in the name of the Lord. And that day, Goliath went down. Some said the stone didn't kill him, just knocked him out. That's okay. But understand this right here, while he was knocked out, David took his sword and cut his head off. End of story. Okay? So... Let's, let's, uh, you know, let's think about this. And, and, you know, let's get our family back. Let's get our kids back. Let's, you know, let's get our churches back. Let's get our nation back. Uh, it's time that we do something. It's time we stop complaining and start maintaining. And so I would love to see you here at 3310 Florence Road on Sunday at 10 o'clock. We have prayer. Uh, and then at 1045, we have service. And on Thursday night, we have 7 o'clock service, uh, getting in the Word of God. And, you know, we have thanks for the children. And uh, so we just want you to come on out and uh, just experience a move of God. Desire to come back. Desire to start a new habit. And that is coming back to Christ. Okay? All right. God bless you. We love you. This Bishop Shaver saying, let's go serve our King.